All right, hello everybody. Welcome back again to uh, another edition of Algebra 2. I'm Mr. Anderson, uh, your host for the evening. Um, we're in section 5.2b, the second part of 5.2. We're still talking about dividing polynomials, but there's good news here. After we talked about dividing polynomials with long division, I'm sure you're probably happy to see that there is another way to do that as well. Uh, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go over a few examples that I think um, in most instances you'll find it a lot simpler. Uh, there's one type of uh, problem where it, it gets a little tricky, but pay attention and we'll see what we can do with that. All right, so let's take a look um, at our objective, which is to divide polynomials using synthetic division. So we had long division and now we've got synthetic division. Uh, it's basically kind of a shortcut uh, method. All right, so we're going to get right into it here. Example number one. We're using synthetic division to find uh, this. We've got x to the third minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4 divided by x minus 2. Here's the pattern um, that we'll go through. All right, so where we're going to start here is let's look at this part right here. And what you do is you you in this case like I said the case later on we're gonna have a number in front of x that's where it gets a little tricky but it, whenever you have just x minus 2 or x plus 7 or x minus 15 whatever the number is you notice here if it's x minus 2 what we're gonna do really in a sense is we're gonna change this instead of minus 2 we're gonna make it a positive 2 and we're gonna put it in this little box like this here one way that you can kind of think of this is you can that can help you to remember that it changes. You can just think of x minus 2 equals 0 plus 2. So that's why it changes. We want to find out what what x is there basically. Okay, so remember here it's going to change sign from what you've got in here. So if it's minus 2, you're going to put plus 2 out here. If this was x plus 2, you'd put a negative 2 in the box. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the uh, coefficient in front of each one of these terms. So in front of the x to the third, that's a 1. So we're going to put a 1 here. In front of the x squared, there's a negative 4. So we're going to write negative 4. Um, in front of the x here, there's a 6. And then we've got minus 4, so we're going to use negative 4. So we just used all of the, the coefficients or the numbers that were in front of the each x term and then, of course, the number itself. Um, you do need to have these in descending order. So notice we had x to the third, x squared, x, and then a number. Um, we're going to talk about this in the next example. But if you're missing a term or terms, you need to put a zero in for that, just like we did when we were doing the long division. Okay, here's the pattern now. We've got all that set up. So... I'm going to draw a line here, somewhere about there. Take the first number, and you're just going to bring it straight down to below the line. Okay, so we bring down the 1 down to here. Then I'm going to take this number down here, the 1, and I'm going to multiply it by the number that's in the box, 2. So 1 times 2 is 2, and then I'm going to put that number in the next column, right here. So I go bring the 1 down, 1 times 2 is 2, and then put that answer here. Now in the next column, I add these. So I have a negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, and I put that down below. Now I just follow that pattern, kind of repeat that pattern. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and I put that in the next column here. I add these. 6 plus a negative 4 is a positive 2. And then I multiply 2 times 2 is 4. Put that over here. And then I have a negative 4 plus 4 is 0. And now what I'll do here is, I know you probably don't have to do this, but you might see this happen a lot. Where I'll, We'll draw a little line here. Okay, that's the actual computation with the numbers. Much easier than the long division. Here's what it means. Once we've done all these numbers, these numbers here are the numbers that go in front of the variables in our answer. 
But what happens is, you notice we started with x to the third. What we're going to do is, when we get our answer here, it's going to go down by one power, and that's where we'll start. So we started with an x to the third here, but now in our answer, we're going to go not x to the third, we're going to go down one x squared. So this one goes in front of the x squared, so it's going to count as one x squared, and we're just going to work our way down. Then this negative two here is going to be minus two x, and then this number here is the number without the uh, variable, so plus two, and then the zero, that is our remainder. So in this case, since we have zero, we don't have a remainder, so we don't have to worry about that. So our answer is x squared minus 2x plus 2. If you did this with long division, you'd find, guess what, you're going to get the same exact answer. Um, so I think you'll probably agree. A little simpler, a little quicker. Uh, you just have to know how the, the pattern all works there. And we'll do, a, do it a couple more times here so you get a feel for it. But that's all there is to it. Okay. All right, let's move on to example two. All right. Again, remember, here's another way that you can see them ask the same problem where you've got the number on top divided by this number on the bottom. So we're going to go through that same procedure again. This C minus two, this is where we get the, the number that puts in the box over here. So since it's C minus two, we're going to put a positive two over here in the box and then we're going to line up our numbers out here. So we've got a 6, we're going to start with 6. C to the third, that's going to be a negative 8. Uh, oh, wait a minute, look at this, be real careful here. We don't have a C squared, do we? Since there's no C squared, we need to put a 0 in here. Then, when we get to the C's, we put 12, and then a negative 14. Okay? Be really careful that you look to make sure they're all there. If one's not there, like here we were missing the C squared, we have to put a zero in there, okay? So be real careful with that. All right, so here's our line. All right, so here's what we do. Again, remember, we just bring this six down. And in a way, it's really the same as what we did with all these other steps. We're really just like doing six plus zero is six. So we're really kind of following the same pattern there. So six, then we go six times two is... 12, put it over here, add these, so 12 minus 8 is 4, multiply 4 times 2 is 8, add these, 8, 8 times 2 is 16, add these, 28, remember this last one is going to be our remainder here, and uh, then we've got uh, 2 times 28 is 56, I think. And then we add these 56 minus 14 would be 42. So we've got a remainder of 42. So here's how this is going to work then. Again, remember we started with C to the fourth. So in our example here where we've got our answer, we're going to write 6 C to the third. Since we started with fourth, we're going to start with third. We're going to go down one. Then we're just going to work our way down. So c to the third, and then we go plus 4c squared, and then plus 8c, plus 28, and then we've got a remainder of 42. So remember what we did before with our remainders? This is a, a positive 42, so we're just going to say plus 42 over our original thing here, c minus 2. Uh, there it is. So that would be our remainder there. We did. We would kind of set that up the same way as we did in long division. You've got your remainder just divided by um, this. Uh, uh, where's my thing here? This uh, up here. Okay. So that up there. Okay. We've kind of seen that a little bit, hopefully. All right. Well, let's take a look at one more example. This third example is where it gets a little bit trickier. But just pay attention here. Stick with me on this. If you just, you know, don't let yourself get crazy on this. Uh, it involves some fractions usually. But usually the fractions work out fairly decently. So it's not going to be too terribly bad. But just watch what I do. The problem on this example is, um, the problem here is that we've got this 
3 in front of the y. And so we can't put in the box negative 1 because there's this 3 in front of the y. So here's what we have to do to set this up so that we can do synthetic with a problem like this. I have to get this y by itself. That's the key. So to get the y by itself, I divide by 3 because 3 divided by 3 is 1. In order to, to kind of counterbalance that, I have to divide everything by 3. I have to divide that 1 by 3. I have to divide this by 3. That by 3. Every one of those 3, I have to divide everything by 3. Okay, this is why I said a lot of times you run into some fractions here. So what does this really leave me with here? Well, what this leaves me with is the 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this is going to be y to the 4th minus 5 thirds y to the third plus 1 third y squared plus 7 thirds y and then again this negative 1 means you're dividing by that so basically you've got all that divided by y plus 1 third okay kind of just wrote it in a little different format there. this is how you have to get it so that you can use the synthetic division so Remember, same thing as before, since this is plus one-third, we have to put a negative one-third in the box. Then we just list out the numbers that are in front of each part here. So we've got one, negative five-thirds, positive one-third, seven-thirds, and there's no number on this one. You notice it was a y to the fourth, y to the third, y squared, y, no number, so we're going to need a zero at the end here. Leave these uh, exactly as they are. Don't try to make this a negative one and two thirds. And don't leave them as they are. It'll be easier to deal with in the form that they're in. I guarantee it. It's hard enough as it is, so don't make it any worse. All right, now let's walk through it here. Bring the one down, just like we did before. One times a negative one third is negative one third. So now you got fractions, but you notice the way that the fractions are working out is they're all over 3. That's why it's not as bad as you'd think it would be. So when we add negative 5 thirds and a negative 1 third, you get negative 6 thirds, which is really what? Negative 2. So then you multiply negative 2 times a negative 1 third. Negative times a negative is positive 2 thirds. Now again, since they're both thirds, we can just add what's on the top. Two plus one is three thirds, which is one. And then we go one times the negative one third, negative one third. So I have seven thirds minus one third is six thirds or a positive two. See how this isn't as bad as you think it's gonna be because they're all thirds here. And then you go uh, two times the negative one third is negative two-thirds so your when you add these your remainder is negative two-thirds okay so so far the, we're gonna have to finish this up in a second here but so far the key here is divide everything by three uh, and it's because of the three in front of the y if that was four y you divide everything by four if it was five y you divide everything by five whatever that takes uh, keep these numbers as they are because the fractions will actually be the same denominator, so it won't be quite as bad. All right, let's put these uh, in our final answer here, and there's one last little twist that we got to watch out for. Remember, we started at y to the fourth, so this is going to be 1y to the third minus 2y squared uh, plus 1y plus 2. That's all these numbers here. And now here's the, the slight little problem that's left. We have what? Minus, and our remainder is negative 2 thirds over um, this here that we got, the y plus 1 third. E, yuck, right? Um, that, we can't leave that as a, as a remainder. We got a fract several fractions within that same fraction. So all you have to do, remember what we did at the beginning here, we divided by 3 to get this whole thing to look like this so that we could put the negative 1 third over here. All you have to do is basically just undo that. So instead of dividing uh, everything in the remainder, you don't have to worry about the, you don't have to uh, worry about, uh, where's my thing? You don't have to worry about all these parts over here. 
just within the fr this fraction, multiply everything by three. Okay, so if you if you multiply uh, the top part by three or three over one, what do you get? These cancel, and you have a negative two. And so let's see, where can I write this and keep everything together here? So, so I'm going to rewrite my answer up here. So I've got y to the third minus 2y squared plus y plus 2. And then since I multiplied by 3 here, I've got minus 2 on the top. And then down here, I'm going to multiply this y by 3, which gives me 3y. And then I'm going to multiply the 1 third by 3. So they cancel and give me 1. So notice what happened here in my final answer. The denominator, when there's a remainder, ended up being the same exact thing in the end as I started with. So really, if I can remember that the denominator is going to go back to that same thing, I just have to multiply by the 3 on the bottom or whatever numbers on the bottom in the denominator there to get rid of that fraction which will become then a negative 2 over that original um, thing that we were dividing by. Okay, So that last part is a little bit tricky. There's a few tricky things with this kind of problem but like I said um, you know we'll practice that a, a few more times in class um, but, that's, but that's what you do. Overall I think you probably find this a lot easier. Usually if I have a choice, I'm going to do synthetic instead of long division. So anyway, that wraps it up for this time. Thanks for uh, being with me. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll uh, see you next time. Uh, take care. Bye.